Tammy, yeah. great, uh, great to be with you. Thank you. Well, first up here, since you were involved with the drafting of that constitution, give us a sense of the history of independence in Ukraine. It goes back a long way, and to see the people now fighting for their country, it has certainly had an impact on the world. Well, you know, I had the good fortune in, in um, August of 1991 to be uh, in the Ukrainian parliament when Ukraine declared independence. I was uh, in Ukraine for five years in the early 90s working as an advisor to the Ukrainian parliament and then practicing law in, in, in Ukraine. And it has been a long, uh, difficult uh, journey. Uh, but it's absolutely extraordinary what we're seeing, uh, what we're seeing uh, today. Back in 91, uh, you had um, a good part of the country, even though Ukraine overwhelmingly voted for independence in the referendum in December of 1991, uh, including Crimea, where the majority of the voters uh, did vote for, uh, for independence. It's been a rocky road with uh, issues of corruption, of um, issues of rule of law, etc. But what's happened now, certainly over the last 10 years, is absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. And the person who, more than anyone, has created a unified Ukrainian nation is Vladimir Putin. Uh, it's really through his actions over the last 10, 15 years uh, that united Ukraine more than ever. And with this la the latest invasion, uh, I've never seen a country so united. You have Russian-speaking cities, Kharkiv, Mariupol, Sumy, Chernihiv, um, fighting to the death against a massive, massive Russian uh, uh, invasion. And so this war, however terrible it is, and it's terrible tragedy has really resulted in the creation of a unified Ukrainian nation. So whatever Putin was trying to achieve through his efforts against Ukraine or bringing Ukraine back into the uh, Russian fold, he has spectacularly failed. Mm, and it seems the sanctions in place are starting to have an impact on the economy in Russia. Are they enough, John? And two, might Putin agree to a deal and withdrawal? And if so, what concessions would he want to save face? Well, based on what the reporting that's coming out of the talks they held in Belarus today, and sort of what your your colleagues were, were reporting, is there's still a huge, a huge, a huge chasm. And these are things Ukrainians are never going to agree to. They're never going to agree to uh, demilitarize. They're never going to agree to not keep open the door to joining joining NATO. So the road to a negotiated settlement is going to be extremely, extremely difficult. But I think there's really four things that really need to happen. One, Ukraine needs a continuing infusion of military weapons. They've shown that they can defend their country. They slowed this uh, Russian juggernaut. Uh, we haven't seen yet everything that Russia is going to be able to throw at it. If we look at what they did in Syria, in Georgia, uh, they could very easily adopt this sort of scor scorched earth policy to try to take some of the main cities like Kharkiv and the capital, uh, the capital cave. But we need to continue to provide robust military assistance to them. Second is sanctions. You mentioned those madly. We need to do even more. Every single member of the Russian Duma needs to be sanctioned. The Security Council, all the oligarchs, their families, their children, cut off their visa uh, cards, their visas, uh, and, and send them packing back to, to Russia. That is going to have a huge influence internally, in addition to all the other sanctions, the central bank, freezing Putin's uh, uh, rainy day fund that he's accumulated, etc. The third is humanitarian assistance, which your colleagues were reporting earlier about the massive influx of refugees, the, the crisis that's unfolding on the border, in the countries that are bordering Ukraine. Uh, we really need to continue to step up our humanitarian assistance. And finally, at the end of the day, this is Putin's war. And, and Putin is not, uh, is not the Russian people. And I suspect that the Russian people got the truth, knew what was actually happening, uh, the atrocities are being committed, this full-out invasion against a peaceful country uh, next door. I suspect the tide could turn. And we almost need it. I hate to almost use the word regime change in Russia. That ultimately is going to be what is going to, I think, end this, this, uh, this conflict. We really appreciate your expertise and your insights uh, so much that you said there uh, all makes sense. We'll see what happens next. We hope you come and talk with us again. Ukraine expert John Hugo, thanks. Thank you very much. With everything going on.